Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Savix and today I'll be covering the Red Paladin talents, runes, and best in slot gear. And without further ado, let's get into the talents. I'll be covering the PvE build first. As you guys know, we got a big buff on Seal of Martyrdom, 10% more damage on the seal, and 10% more on the judgment dealing damage. So to start off, we're gonna go with Blessing of Might for more attack power, Judgment for 2 seconds less on Judgment spell, improve crusader so that every boss fight you put the seal of crusader in first and then you do your normal rotation and try not to let this fall off if it does fall off because you're doing some sort of mechanic you can just reapply it right away uh, next we're gonna go with conviction for big damage and here most of these you don't really benefit from pve same as improve retribution aura since we're going with sanctity aura and like i said we're not gonna go with seal of command uh, this is personal choice. You can either go with Pursuit of Justice to move a little bit faster, doing some mechanic or dodging some mechanic, or you can just go with Benediction to use less mana. However, with Seal of Martyrdom, you don't go Oom um that fast as before. So I'm going to recommend you guys go with Pursuit of Justice and 3 on Benediction. And we'll probably put one more point in here to reach the last one. Uh, we're going to go with Sanctity Aura for 10% more holy damage. And we'll go with two-handed weapon specialization for bigger two-hand weapon damage. And like I said, back to Benediction for one more to unlock Vengeance. And that will be five. Uh, Repentance is really not used in PvE. So we're going to go with one Divine Strength for more damage. Maybe in the future if we require CC we can go with this. Yet it's not necessary. So this is what it's looking like for PvE so far i know a lot of people are wondering if you can use seal of righteousness you can however you have to sacrifice a lot of vengeance to go deep in there and i don't know if it's worth it so i'm not gonna recommend this i know some people like messing with that but for me i don't like that so that's the best PvE talent right now for raids, biggest damage you can do. And for runes, uh, we're going to go with Seal of Martyrdom. Like I said, this is going to be your main seal. So in PvE cases, let me scroll down so I don't cover my camera. You're going to apply Seal of Crusader first, and then we're going to go Martyrdom. You can also Seal Twist if you wish. However, there is a tricky part. I'll cover that soon. Our second rune, we're going to go with Crusader Strike. And third one, we're going to go with Sheet of Light for more damage. Sheet of Light will help you with your spell power, and this will be helpful for exorcism. And the last one is going to be Art of War. So with this build, your Seal of Martyrdom is going to be your main damage dealer, also gaining some mana. You can also do your twist, but you got to time it properly so you don't waste globals. In boss fights, you're going to get a lot of Art of War procs and you kind of want to maximize just shooting out your exorcism and not waste any global. You can definitely time it, that's why I said I'll come back to it. If you can time it, make sure you have weapon swing timer, time it perfectly, and you will do the ultimate damage. Later when we get into gear, I'll talk about faster weapon and having more agility for bigger crits so that we can proc more Art of War. So this build will make sense when I cover everything. And now we're going to talk about the PvP build. There's going to be two builds. One is Deep Red and one is Reckoning. So for the Deep Red talent, we're going to be putting our talent points in Blessing of Might. Same reason applies. Bigger attack power for more damage. We're going to go with Judgment for big Judgment damages. And I want to explain something about Seal of Command here. Because a lot of people are missing the point. So 3 into Benediction to unlock Seal of Command. You can also argue going with Deflection instead of Benediction if you want more mana or fighting melees. This is helpful. Every time you parry, you're going to swing back faster. But for my personal taste, I'm going to go with Benediction. And 5 Conviction, 2 Pursuit of Justice. If you do have the Arathi base and boots, you don't need to go into Pursuit of Justice because those don't stack. And you can finish Benediction or put a little bit into Deflection, depending on your taste. I'm going to assume that players don't have the boots yet since you need to get revered. I'm going to put it into Pursuit of Justice for now. And a little tip for a seal of command. If you read the bottom message, it says unleashing the seal's energy will judge an enemy, instantly causing 68 to 73 damage. But if the target is stunned or incapacitated, you'll do a lot more damage. And if this crits, it hits really hard. So make sure after you hodge, you do a combination of judgment into exorcism or Judgment into Divine Storm, depending on how many enemies there are, and your seal will hit hard. 
also applies for your repentance since this is an end cap. Next two points, I'm going to go with eye for an eye to unlock the bottom two. Eye for an eye is really good right now. Um, I've had eye for an eye proc or shaman for like 800 damage or 500 on boomkins. It actually hits back pretty damn hard because so many of the casters hit such big numbers, right? So eye for an eye is really good. We're going to go with Sanctity Aura. 3 into specialization for more damage and I'm gonna put 1 into vindication to unlock vengeance and I'm just putting 1 just so that we get that 5% reduction which is better than nothing right like do I really want mana or reflect seal of crusader I'm really not gonna use that in pvp because if I can cc'd or it's like a waste of judgment sometimes you can still do it but I tend to not use seal of crusader for now in pvp so one into Vindication and then Repentance and that's all 40. For PvP, I'm gonna go with Divine Storm, Crusader Strike, Sheet of Light. And this one you can argue going with Avenger Shield. I haven't played with Avenger Shield in a while because Exorcism just procs so often now. And it's a lot of damage. But if you're dueling against a really good kite class, you'll probably not benefit too much from Exorcism because you gotta proc out of war to get a lot of damage going, right? So you can still use Avenger Shield and Sacred Shield combination. I used to like Guarded by the Light a lot, but they made a change where you can't remove the Guarded by the Light buff. So it's kind of useless. All right, now we're gonna go with the Reckoning build. I'll demonstrate some damage here so you guys can get the idea of what this is all about. It is very strong, and I think if you're trying to make a montage or 1v1 in a melee class, it's very, very powerful. Yet, like I said at the start, if you're fighting against a kite class that are good, uh, it's gonna be hard. Alright, here we go, chat. And it's a little bit early to be playing this. It gets better as you get higher level because you can uh, mix a little bit of Retribution and the Reckoning, right? So to begin with, we're going to go with Devotion Aura. We're not going to be able to go deep into Sanctity. And next is going to be Precision for that 3 hit cap. And PvP hit cap helps as well. And next, we're going to have Guardian's Favor so that we have faster Freedoms and faster Bob, which is going to help. We're also going to go with a Blessing of Kings here and Toughness to unlock Improve Hammer of Justice. Oh, I like this a lot. Getting stunned back faster. A 6 second stun is what really makes Red Paladins pop off in PvP. And this is really good because it allows us to get our stun back faster. We're going to put one more into Toughness and one into Anticipation to unlock the Reckoning. And if you are going to play with Reckoning, I recommend you guys download the Weak Aura to keep track of how much stack you have. And for the last remaining points, you're not going to go deep into red. So all of these is not that beneficial. We're going to be using Blessing of Kings. Blessing of Might's not going to be helpful. So we're going to go with Divine Strength and 1 into Seal of Righteousness. This is also going to be beneficial to Seal of Martyrdom, which is the build you're going to play for Reckoning. So for the chest, we're going to put Seal of Martyrdom, and you can pop Martyrdom, twist, with the stack of Reckoning, and you're going to do a massive amount of damage. If you want to add a little bit more spice to this, you can also get some oils to have more proc damage. It's going to be huge. For hands, we're going to go with Crusader Strike, uh, Sheet of Light, Exorcism, and Art of War. So this will be the build. Um, you can also go into Avenger Shield, and Sacred Shield. This might be a little bit more beneficial for Reckoning build. I know a lot of people get excited for Exorcism spams, but since you don't really have the mobility to catch people, Avenger Shield is going to help. And Repentance is not there to in-cap someone to catch up to the players. So really think about the choices on the leg. And let me know if you guys try out the Reckoning build. It's a really fun build versus melee. And that's pretty much it for the talents. Now we're going to talk about the best in slot gear. 
If you're just starting a Red Paladin from the leveling boost and you're trying to farm the pre-rate biz, this is what I recommend. The helmet from SM, neck from BFD, you should always be doing them. Failed flying experiment, uh, I have a video where I get this if you want to watch it, feel free to follow along. Blood Drenched Drape, this is from the STV event, it's really really worth it for the bit crit. And Agility Enchant, like I said, more agility, more crit, more out of work proc, more exorcism. And that's gonna build up a lot of damage. Warforged Chestplate with the two all stat enchant. This quest start from the Badlands. If you don't want to go do this chain quest, you can go with the Shifting Silver Breastplate, which is a craftable item from Blacksmith. And this is gonna help because it gives you a hit chance. And at the level we're at right now, hit chance is very, very nice. So you can go with Warforge or the Breastplate. For the bracelet, go with Branded Leather Bracers with 5 Strength Enchant. If you've done your homework and you're exalted with Warsong, you can just go straight for the Berserker Bracelets, which is the most powerful bracelet out there. But if you didn't, do go with the Branded Leather Bracelets. For the weapon, if you have been doing SM, you can play with Morgan's Might. However, getting the Bloodlight Avengers Edge is fairly easy. You just go to some STD events, maybe 2-3 to three times depending on your comp, and you'll get this bad boy. For glove, this is going to drop in SM with 5 strength, and the belt is going to drop from RFD. For the leg, I recommend getting Centurion Leg Plate, however this does take a lot of work and you're probably going to need a raid to kill the last boss. Uh, if this is too much work for you, you can just stick with the Scarlet Monastery Leg and just pray that uh, your leg piece will drop in SM. Now that the gear is token based, it is a lot easier to get. For the boots, we'll be going with Shin Kicker, uh, this quest you start from STV. And for the rings, I put Warsong Gold Rings, which is the protector band. You can have the 38 one and the 28 one. If you're struggling to farm reputation for Warsong, I recommend just doing Ashenvale each time it's up. And that will rack up really, really fast. And if you want Exalted, you can still turn in that one time turn in token for the little damage buff. You could do that weekly and it will give you 1000 points. If you are not going to do Warsong, you can get the Iron Spine from Scarlet Monastery, this is a rare spawn. And the other, you're just gonna have to fill either BFD or the Auction House Angle, which I don't recommend. Uh, for Trinket, you have to get the BFD Trinket, even though if you're level 40, you probably want to go back and get this. It's one of the best Trinkets out there, up to date. And the last Trinket, if you're not raiding, uh, go for the Thunder Bruce Boot Flask. Quest starts from Westfall. And for Libram, it's pretty much useless. There's only two available. One is from BFD, which is uh, 15 attack power against undead. And the other one is Benediction, which reduces the mana seal, but it only comes out from Nomargon. So yeah, that's it for the pre-raid biz. And now let's get into the raid gear. So number one, the helmet from Blacksmith is pretty pricey. If you don't have a lot of money, you can stick with the SM helmet, which still gives you a ton of strength and crit. If you do have money and there is a 300% boost on quest rewards right now, so you can make a lot of money fast, you can go for the blacksmith helmet. So if you can afford it, I recommend the helmet from blacksmith. If not, stick with the SM one. Next, we have the Nomargon's Necklace. This is a drop from the last boss. Everyone gets a little ticket. You turn that in and you can pick a necklace. It's the same as uh, the little pearl from BFD, where it drops on the last boss guarantee. You turn it in and you grab that. Next, we have the shoulders from the Trogs. A drape of Dismantling, drop from the second boss, the Water Elemental. Three Agility, four more Agility, more out of four, more Exorcism. Uh, we're gonna go with the Insulated Chest for two stats and I'm gonna be covering the hazard gear too. We'll go back after I explain everything here. Uh, the bracelet, best in slot is the Warsong 1. Like I said, if you don't want to go for that, if it's too much work, you can go with the uh, Crowd Pummeler boss, which is another one. Nail 22 attack power and 7 agility. And the best weapon right now is the automatic Crowd Pummeler. So if you remember me talking about the fast weapon for more swings and more swing, more crit, more damage, that's kind of basic rule right now for PvE. And Crowd Pummeler is just a fast weapon and on new streaming to cooldown for 50% more speed. 
So you're just going to be slamming and shooting out exorcisms left and right. It's a, it's a fun build. If you don't like that, you can go with the Thermo Plug and just use Sealer Command. And another rule to keep in mind, Sealer Command, the slower the weapon, the more chance to have bigger procs. So in future, if Sealer Command comes back, remember, slower weapon is better. But for Seal of Martyrdom, we're going to be sticking with the Crop Hummler. I've been very unlucky and I still don't have this, yet we're not doing too bad. We're ranked 201 and once I get the Crowd Pummeler, we'll probably jump up a lot in the ranks. For the gloves, we're going to be putting 5 Strength and Grubby Scrubby Gauntlet from the first boss. Uh, there's another glove called Machinist Glove. And this will be better when you're fighting mechanical units. So if you have the choice and everyone's okay with you rolling on the leather glove, uh, go for the machinist glove just for the machine bosses. For the belt piece, you have two choices. You can go with the dark vision girdle. If you are engineering, you can go with the hyperconductive gold wrap. And if you get the right coin flip, it's going to help a lot. Next, we have the insulated leg guards for that one crit from the two set. The three set is not beneficial for paladin. Obvious reason you could read it there. And the last one is the Shin Kicker. But if you're going for the Hazard gear, you're probably going to want the three set piece for the Hazard. Uh, next is the Protector Band from Warsong Gulch and the Hypercharge Gear Devastation. Super powerful ring. We have the Gyromatic Experiment and the Void Pearl from BFD and the Libram that makes your mana cost less. And now I'm going to talk about the Hazard gear. Oh, I just realized I have my chat blocker on the cam this whole time. It's for streaming. Here is the note I made for you guys to visualize a little better and maybe you can follow along. The hazard gear gives you more hit, more attack power, and the insulated gear gives you more crit since it has a lot of agility base. So if you're looking for more crit to have more exorcism proc, you go with the insulated gear. If you need more hit and attack power, I recommend the hazard gear. So at first, my initial thought was I want to have more crit to do more damage. Then I realized phase 2, the gear, we don't have a lot of hit on them. So it might be better to just go for hazard if you're just starting to gear up. If you need help calculating, you could get an add-on for extended character stats or come on this website, 60 Upgrade, put in your gear, and you can look at all your stats there. And that is pretty much it for the best in slot. No more gone. Hopefully this was helpful. Alright, hitting my record button once again because I totally forgot about the PvP build. For PvP, I recommend a slower weapon. Either use the Dermer Plug or Bloodlight Avenger. I prefer the Bloodlight Avenger because it's a slower weapon and has that increased holy spell damage effect. And the reason why you want a slower weapon is because you benefit more from Seal of Command. The slower the weapon, the higher chance to proc. The maximum weapon speed is 4 I believe and 46.67% chance to proc more on hit. And now for the gearing. It's a little bit tricky. Everything dies super fast. SOD is very bursty. And relatively we want to kill things faster too. And Blizzard increased our HP pool in PvP zones such as Battleground or STV. And honestly I've been just rocking my PvE gear. If it bothers you, you can definitely go for more stamina gear. I recommend going for the hazard set. Yet if you want to just kill other things faster, such as other classes, just wear your PvE set, change the weapon, and have fun. And lastly, I'll talk about uh, consumables. I recommend getting Elixir of the Agility, Elixir of the Strength, Lesser Arcane Elixir, and if you don't have a Feral Druid, I recommend having a Feral Druid. But let's say it comes down to having no druids, you can't find one, uh, use shadow oil for your weapon. And that concludes everything. I think I covered everything. Uh, if you're interested in my add-on, I have an add-on video. If you have any question, you can tune into my stream. Feel free to ask any question. And I'll try to be helpful. If I'm already zoned in and locked into some content, I might not reply, but just keep shooting the message. I'll reply eventually. And that's it. Hope you guys learned something out of it or found it helpful. If it did, please leave a like. And I'll see you in the next video.